everybody and thank you for tuning in. I'm so happy you are here and let's take a look at the markets today. Right now it is the 1st of May and you can see it's a little bit red. But if you've really looked at the prices, the Bitcoin price is practically at an all time high. It was uh, at 1460 today on GDAX. Ethereum was at 85 today at GDAX. And these, these prices are just through the roof and everything is at all time highs. There's very little exceptions almost of coins that are not uh, trading very high or very close to the all time high. So today I want to look at the market and figure out um, how to deal with these prices and these all time highs. I hope that you've been able to be in this market and write out this market. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the overall mark market altogether. Now, this chart here, the combined altcoin market has shown us a little bit of a hockey stick. So it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are basically in an altcoin bubble at this point in time. And the reason why I think that is because we see this kind of hockey stick type of uptrend. Now, I already thought that we were in a bubble when the price was back here, but we just had another boom. Now, I'm not sure that we are at the end of this bubble. Often these bubbles happen in kind of um, two, three runs, and maybe we've just gone through the second and run, and maybe there's going to be a third run. But I would not be surprised um, if, you know, this is not going to go on for the rest um of the year or for the rest of eternity. Eventually, it's going to have to come down. If we take a look at this market, the altcoin market, we see how the market has increased dramatically in terms of its 24 hour volume. So the amount of money that is being traded every day in these altcoin markets has exploded. One thing that is very, very encouraging is that the, these volumes are not decreasing. They're still pretty damn high, including today. It almost looks like we're very close to these um, very high points that we see here. So this shows us there's still a lot of energy in the market. So I personally do not think that this um, bubble is over, but I do think that we are very clearly in a bubble. Another thing interesting to look at is the market capitalization. We've seen this trend of uh, Bitcoin losing its dominance right now at 60%. Uh, yesterday it was the first time when we were under 60%. Now Bitcoin is rising uh, today and the rest of the market is going a little bit down, including Ethereum. Ethereum had this great run. A lot of this here is driven by Ethereum. Um, so this is interesting. And the question here is when it comes to the dominance of Bitcoin is, is this going to turn around? We should kind of, if we look at this trend, we should expect that Bitcoin is going to explode in the coming weeks or months um, at the expense of the altcoin market. Uh, we'll see if that all will happen. Now, in addition to that, I want to take a look at the total market capitalization. So this is the entire crypto market. This is a very interesting chart to look at because until very recently, this chart did not seem entirely crazy, did not seem too bubbly, looked more like a very, very healthy bull run. But now we see kind of this hockey stick forming here. So now we're, I think, maybe approaching bubble territory soon, if, especially if this keeps on going higher. So this will be very, very interesting to see. Also, if we take a look at this entire market, um, we're still not that insanely high if we compare the values from today to the 2013 um, levels. I talked to a friend today, you know, and I basically told him, I don't think this bull rally is over because look at where Bitcoin is. It's basically at the same price where it was in 2013. I personally think that Bitcoin has has a way to explode. However, I don't think that this will happen in the very short term. I really think that in the very near future, the entire market is coming down. However, overall, I think we are still in a bull run and I think this overall market bubble that we are in 
is not done yet and especially bitcoin i think has a, a way to grow it will also be interesting to see if bitcoin is going to explode or if ethereum is going to take over bitcoin so there's a lot of question marks in this market um, but right now i think it is exciting to be in this market now granted everything i say i might just be high on these uh gains that i've had in the last couple of months so be very careful these are just kind of my thoughts my opinion how i see the market at this point in time so now i want to go and talk about why i believe that the market um, may be going down in the very short term so i want to start with um ethereum price kind of medium uh long medium term kind of view on this market so we see here how at the beginning of the year ethereum was trading around 10 then had this explosion up to 50 and then had kind of the sideways movement i was basically expecting ethereum to come uh, correct a little bit but that did not happen i was maybe thinking it would come here uh, 230 that did not happen uh, ethereum had the side trend and now just the last couple of days exploded all the way to 70 and 80 dollars now i actually sold ethereum right here up here i think this was maybe a mistake i really should have looked at this long-term trend and anticipated uh, that we uh, will hit these kind of 80 dollars um, but i've sold a little bit of my ethereum uh, stash now granted i did this primarily because i am going to need a little bit of cash in the near-term future so i just kind of liquidated uh, about 10 percent of my ethereum holdings now what i do expect to happen in the very near future because we've just bumped against this uh, trend line here i think the price is going to come down and then it will be very interesting to see if we're going to hold this uptrend that has formed i think this may be a pretty strong uptrend and because i think generally the market is, is is doing pretty well and has a lot of energy still i don't think this bubble is going to crash just yet but we never know i think it could very well happen i just believe that this part is more likely so i think then the market could um, go back up However, if we really look at how Ethereum has behaved in the past, it never has done that. So it never went up, down, up, down, up, down. What Ethereum always has done is uh, find some kind of stable price, uh, break out of that, and then have kind of a side uh, movement, and then break out of this. This also happened here. You can see this. It basically went against this $55 type of uh, price um and and then bounced against that price started to build an uptrend and then break out of this 55 and then it just exploded up to the next high similar to what we did here from kind of 10 going to 50. now if we look at the very long term trend of ethereum we can see a similar pattern uh, we we uh, came out at like four dollar then consolidated around one dollar one to two dollar and had kind of this sidewards movement here around kind of this one to two dollar mark then exploded up to kind of ten dollars and then moved between kind of eight and fifteen dollars in a side movement granted there was this uh, this blip that happened uh, with the dow but essentially we've had a very very long ten dollar type of side trend that could not really be disturbed not by all the attacks that ha happened on ethereum not by the dow i mean granted if we zoom into this in it might look like ethereum lost like half its price from the 21 all the way to eight but to me what is really kind of the key thing is that we were kind of bouncing around the ten dollar mark here and then we broke out of this right here and then exploded towards 50 and then we just did the same thing just in a very very compressed time time frame if we compare this pattern uh to what happened previously and in the beginning so we've had this pattern basically happen three times so because of that i could very well see uh, maybe a side movement here so if that side movements happen watch out when we basically get above 85 that may then trigger a new explosion towards 100 maybe to, towards 150 or 120 who the heck knows 
Um, yeah, so this is very, very exciting for Ethereum, but I do think it's a good time to sell right now just to maybe catch a lower price here at 66 or 65 or something like this. But that may also not happen um, and we may just have kind of uh, a side movement. So also look out for that when you look at the Ethereum price. Now, if we take a look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is very interesting. We have had more of these ups and downs and ups and downs in Bitcoin itself, kind of working within these trend channels. Now, the trend channels are kind of uh, hard to draw. They, they, they're they not actually that consistent. So, for instance, if we just look at this, uh, this uptrend channel that I drew here, we already broke out of this. Uh, but also, it this, we're not done here with this candle, so we might actually come back and stay within this guy. Um, but there's also another kind of up limit or, or trend line forming here between the last two highs. Yeah, we could also draw them uh, further down uh, here to, to, to these highs closer in the beginning. And you can see we could come up even with uh, yet another uh, uh, trend channel. Um, which again, it would look like we've broken through these. But we can also see that they don't hold all too well, given that these guys are kind of there, but not too close. So I don't, I'm, I don't really know exactly where these upper limits are. However, I do think that we're probably close to some of these up limits. So I also think right now that it would be a good time to sell Bitcoins. Um, let it crash down to this uptrend here. If my feeling is right that we're still kind of bullish, um, we then may go up here. Now, one thing that's interesting is, is this little arrow that I put here. Um, Tone Vase basically said he was in Philadelphia at a Bitcoin meeting. I saw him in person. It was really cool to talk to him. Tone Vase basically expects that in August of this year we'll reach $2,000. I've also made this prediction that we could reach two to $10,000 this year. So if any of this, if Tone's prediction is to hold through, these uptrends need to be broken through. There needs to be some, some kind of steep rise up here. So I don't know, maybe uh, we're not gonna be this fast, maybe we will be this fast. I really have no idea. Um, just looking at this price and talking with other friends about this market, um, what I would uh, think is probably a good idea right now is to sell some Bitcoin and then try to find um, enter points a little further down here. If you don't like this trading stuff, it may make sense to just stay in the market as well. Now, generally when you're trading, also take a look what country you're in and if you have a capital gains tax. I, for instance, live in the United States. I'm actually not going to do this sort of trading. The reason is I would have to pay taxes. So if I do a, a, a sell here and, um, and then uh, I make a trade that I make money on, if I buy and sell within one year, uh, this is basically regular income that I have to take regular income tax um, on, which in the United States ranges from basically uh, uh, 10, 10 percent or something i don't actually know the lower bounds but the the top uh, uh bracket is at 40 plus state tax so some people for instance in pennsylvania where i live if you live in the city of philadelphia and you're in the top bracket you may pay up to 50 percent or 47 percent in taxes so because of this tr um, when you're in a situation like this trading might not make sense and because of my tax situation I actually do not trade. I just um, uh, don't do that. However, uh, speaking with other peoples that are investors that live in countries, for instance, like Panama or Switzerland, where there's no capital gains tax, trading might make a lot of sense. So I've just given you reasons to maybe sell Bitcoin and Ethereum, but there are always also reasons not to sell. So I've already talked a little bit about taxes. Most people have a 20 to 30 percent tax rate. And so, you know, if you're making 20 to 30 percent uh, profits by basically um, selling now and, and, and buying on a dip, well, the first 20 to 30 percent, they're not no good to you. So the market has to crash like 60 percent or 50 percent in order for that to make sense. Every time you make a trade, you take all the risk. If you win, you get taxed. If you don't win, the government doesn't give you any money. So these are basically fees that take away from your profit and they are compounding. So if you have these taxes, you got to figure out a way um, to avoid them. 
the only solution that I personally have or for me personally is to just kind of hold things long. Uh, that way the max tax uh, rate can be 15% and then I can just let it run. And when I think it's over or like the particular thing that I'm investing into um, is, is done, sell then and hopefully that takes longer than a year. The other reason that is a very good reason not to sell is we have to be in the market on the best days or on the biggest parts of the bubble because these growth is exponential. So if you think about these markets usually move in percentages. So we've seen recently that these coins, they often move in kind of 20 to 50 percent, uh, you know, upswings. And so think about if this happens three to five times in a row, then really where you make the money is the very last time this happens. So getting out of the market and then not being in the market when the best days happen or when the best moves happen is the most expensive thing. And so we as humans, we have a hard time understanding exponential growth. So it's really important to be logical about these things. So it can be extremely expensive not to be in the market when the market go up. So you need to make sure that you get into these things early and then just let them run and um, and hope to be in there at the end. Another thing is that trading is really, really hard and beating the market is much, much harder. So we have like all these stories where like there's been these, you know, experiments and they figured out that like a monkey trades just as well as like a human. I don't really believe in these things. But what I do believe in is that trading is really, really difficult and it's not so simple uh, to trade effectively. So if you're not confident that you can absolutely kill and beat the market, the simplest way is to just um, not do it and just go into the market. Not being in the market is usually the most expensive thing. Peace.